Hi, this is David Valade with Alta Vista Technology. We've done a lot of videos uh, showing off the great functionality behind Sage Tech's budgeting and planning module. And the more we've talked about it internally, the more we've come to realize that we've only scratched the surface and we've left out a lot of key features that really deserve a little bit more of a spotlight. So we thought we'd get into that today. We've probably all heard the phrase in these uncertain times a little bit too much lately. So we started thinking about uncertainty in the context of budgeting. Now, the whole idea of budgeting is that you're trying to predict the future, <laughs> and uh, it just takes one shock to the system to upend all of your hard work. So I, I know personally, even in simpler times, having to work with my clients, we'd have different situations where we'd be looking at scenarios. Do we want to buy that factory out of state? Or what if we change our prices? Or what if we hire more employees? That's just how companies run all the time, but a good budgeting software would do a really good job of letting you ask those what-if questions more easily so that you can make the best decisions possible. Fortunately, Sage and Tech Budgeting Planning has scenario planning capability, and I'd like to show a little bit of that here. So here I have a budget, and I'm looking at my dashboard here, but I'm going to switch over to some of my inputs here, and I'm going to go to, actually, let's go to our model. We did another video where we talked a little bit about how a model can work in the system. So I'll go over this just briefly. I have a model. I can call this model whatever I want. I've called this one leads. And just walking through this, let me give a, a little quick uh, explanation of what I did in this budget. I said, I'm going to average 10,000 leads per month. I put in my comments. And my conversion rate for budgeting purposes is about 5% of those leads will turn into customers. And in this world, uh, if you buy my product here, I'm going to say you're either going to buy basic or premium. And if you buy basic, that costs $200 a month. If you buy premium, well, that's $400 a month. And then I'm also adding an assumption here saying that 75% of all the sales that I get on average tend to be basic. The remainder, in this case, 25% would be premium. So that's what my assumptions are. And then if you look down below, all this math here is happening automatically. So converted leads, like that is being done uh, based on the math for the inputs I have, sales, premium, and so on. So if I put that back there, you'll see all those numbers again. You can do some rough math to check my work here. But what this all works out to be is if I have these assumptions up at the top, I should be having sales of $125,000 per month. And also you'll see this is linked. So what that means is that this is linked I can even see a little map of how it is linked. Uh, it is linked over to my budget lines. So I have annual sales it happens to be account 4,000 for the accountants in the room. And I could see that that's where that is uh, set right now, where I picked that to go onto my budget. And just resetting on the whole model idea, the way this is great is I can have costs associated with sales. I can have all sorts of assumptions and everything here. I can have multiple models for lots of different things whether that is buying the factory out of state or whether that is hiring employees or changing our prices. So I get to have all those different kinds of models to, to drive those kinds of costs or sales or revenue or, or capital items and have it all flow through to my budget, which is great. So let's say there's a shock to the system that is going to change the way we are forecasting our lead conversion and therefore our sales. Could be anything, and if you check the news today, there's no shortage of hypotheticals I could pull from. So let's make up a scenario. Let's say that we think that the economy is going to slow and we're going to have to take some steps to combat that so we can come out the other side stronger than ever. Let's say a few things are gonna happen. So first thing, and I'll, I'll take these off here. Number one, let's say we think, we think the mix of customers we're going to get is going to skew even more towards basic than premium. So this 75% percentage of customers being basic customers, we think it's actually gonna be even higher. So that's the first thing. Second thing we think is that we want to change our prices. As a result, we're gonna lower our premium sales price just to try to hold the line to keep premium viable. And then the third thing is that because the economy is slowing down, we're going to have some additional interest expense because we're going to take on a line of credit. So those three things are what I want to do. And I want to see, like, I don't know if this is going to be an actual budget change. This is a hypothetical. This is something we're debating internally. Maybe we have lots of different scenarios. Like maybe we have other ways we're going to combat an economic slowdown, but this is one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a scenario. Off I go here. I'm going to say, click new scenario. 
I'm going to give this a name here, economic slowdown. Uh, maybe that's 01, <laughs> uh, strategy one of dealing with the economic slowdown. So there we go. And now a few things happen here. So now I have this little blue banner at the top here to be very visually apparent that I am dealing with a scenario. And now let's do some of those changes I talked about. So I said our um, our percent of sales, instead of 75%, I'm gonna change it. Let's say it's gonna be 80%. Before I do that though, take a look down here. You'll see that right now I'm forecasting $125,000 a month of revenue. So if I were gonna change that to be 80% here, a couple things happen. So now I have a little banner here saying that I have changed this, this for this scenario one. Okay, I'm not done yet, but it's there. And if I go down to the bottom, my sales here has changed from $125,000 per month to $120,000. And if I wanted to track that through because that's linked, that's I can go all the way down to my budget and see that reflected there. But I'm gonna make a few more changes. So, okay, so we said that that's gonna happen there. And then I'm said that my premium sales price is going to go down a little bit, say from $400 to $380. And there we go. And I could change anything here. Number of leads that might go up or down, conversion rate could be changed fractionally, but I'll just keep it there for that for now just to say like, okay, so what would happen if I had the prices change, the premium change, and all these things change? What is the effect so far to my budget? And I can see that right there, right? So then I, I've made these changes. Uh, let's say I get called away, it's a very busy day, and I come back and I'm wondering, what did I do <laughs> before I got called away? Well, we can always see our changes here. So I can see what what changes did I make in this scenario. I changed the premium and the basic. This is all happening in my scenario here called economic slowdown 01. And what that means is that you know my my core budget is unchanged. This is just what ifs, and I can kind of track this through to see what would happen. And if I didn't like this, if I thought I'd gone too far, or if I get word from the boss that actually, you know what, if we were to change our price, it would be a little bit different. I could revert my changes, go back to where I started and then start over. One more change we wanted to make was a line of credit. We said, what if we started borrowing money? Well, one consequence of that would be that I'd probably have some interest expense. I could do that here with another model, but I'm gonna instead go over to uh, my main section. And this is another way we can put information into our budget. And this is basically how I've organized it. I have revenues, cost of revenues, and so on. And I can drill into any of these to uh, put my budget in this way. This is also helpful if I just have dollar amounts that I want to put across and I don't want to go through the whole model idea. If I just want to say, ah, it's a fixed amount of so much money per month, let's say. And that's kind of what I'm going to do here. So interest expense, let's say I'm going to have a monthly interest expense, same amount each month. I have other choices, but I think that's going to work for what I'm after here. And let's say uh, $200 per month. Okay, US dollars is good. And then if I look up here, the effect on my cash is that I'm going to have uh, $200 less per month as a result of that. And yet again, I do have that option up here where I can see my changes and I can see the different things that are changing as a result of me uh, tinkering with this and making all these changes here in my in my scenario. The other thing you'll see is the little blue banner at the top. That blue color is helpful as a visual indicator because I can come down and can see that heading has blue on it. That's telling me, you know, very clearly that anytime I see that blue color, that that is something I changed related to this scenario. Very helpful. So I can see that at a glance. Now I just did this here. Now I could have other scenarios, right? I could come along and add another scenario. Maybe instead of an economic slowdown, let's say we have uh, that other plant we want to buy, or let's say we we have another scenario where we're going to bring a new product out, and I want to see what that would look like. I can have all those scenarios and have them all lined up and keep my core budget as is because I haven't made a decision yet. Am I taking this line of credit? And I can keep all these scenarios off to the side and not affect my core budget. Now let's say I'm going to make these changes after all. Management has looked at this. They've looked at the, the cost of having a line of credit here for this interest expense. This doesn't seem to scare anybody. If we go over to our model, we've showed this, uh, the effects of having our different price mix and our different assumptions. And again, we liked this, I, this idea in a model because if someone ever comes to us and says, well, how did you get $118,000 per month? It's right there. We could say, well, we're assuming we're gonna have 10,000 leads a month. We have that conversion rate and so on and so on. So let's say now that we have all this in place and now the executives, the bosses say, you know what, we are gonna go ahead with that change. We are going to change our sales price. We're gonna take on that line of credit and we want that to be our new budget going forward. 
nice and easy. I can come up here and I can hit the little ellipse and I could say, you know what, merge that with my budget. I get a little pop up here confirming that it is something I want to do and reminding me that I can take snapshots of the budget. So if I want to have a snapshot of the budget before and after and have that at the ready, that's a good recommended way to go. Let's pretend I already did that and I'm just going to say merge. And there we go. This information is now set. This information is going to be reflected on my dashboard within the system. I'm going to see this uh, synced over to the budget over in Sage Intech proper. So that information, the same information is everywhere for everyone to see. So as I said at the top, hopefully you can see some of the great features that are in Sage Intech budgeting and planning. And it's a product that keeps getting better all the time. Please keep an eye out over at our new content that we're coming out with all the time over at altavistatech.com. Thanks a lot and happy budgeting.